Breaking right now, a deadly crash on I-90 is blocking the eastbound lanes just west of the town of Sprague. Troopers say a car and a semi truck collided, killing one person just after 430 this afternoon. Then a second crash happened as traffic backed up six miles west of the initial accident. Traffic is using the shoulder, but as you might imagine, that is causing some long delays right now. There is no estimated time when the eastbound lanes will reopen and troopers say to expect significant delays if you are traveling east between Ritzville and Spokane. What was effective yesterday? That Dr. Lutz is no longer the health officer at the health district starting today. This is Ariel with the spokesman. Was Dr. Lutz asked to resign and he resigned or did you terminate him on a recommendation of the board? You know, because this is a personnel issue, I'm not able to go into that question. So you can't tell us if he was terminated or if he resigned? So, at, you know, at this point, um, under advice of counsel, I really can't go into details regarding that. Remember that chaotic press conference? It was nearly a year ago that Spokane Regional Health District Administrator Amelia Clark announced that Dr. Bob Lutz had been ousted from his role as the health officer. The circumstances of that ouster were dubious, possibly even illegal. And today, another development in this bizarre saga. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News at 6 tonight. Whitney is off. Well, for months, Dr. Bob Lutz has said that Administrator Amelia Clark broke the law by firing him, something that can only be done by a public vote of the health board. Clark has claimed, meantime, she merely asked him to resign. A preliminary state investigation sided more with Lutz in its findings, however, and a new leaked email published by the Inlander shows SRHD's own lawyer told board members Clark had fired Lutz. Today, the board responded to that leak. Joining us to break it down is our Casey Decker. And Casey, how'd the board respond? Well, Mark, simply put, in the face of even more evidence to the contrary, the board doubled down on its claims that Clark didn't actually illegally fire Lutz. Now, to be clear, not all the board members were in favor of this statement. Brian Beggs voted against it, and Betsy Wilkerson abstained. But there's really no way around this. This latest statement not only frequently omits important context, it sometimes makes claims that are outright false. Let's break some of them down. The letter begins by asserting that the email you mentioned, Mark, was attorney-client privilege. In that email, according to the Inlander article, board lawyer Michelle Fossum told board members, quote, please be advised that Amelia has terminated Dr. Lutz's employment. The subject line was simply the phrase attorney-client privilege. However, many if not most interpretations of what the actual definition of attorney-client privilege is are not so broad. In other words, not all communication between lawyers and their clients is automatically privileged. Many argue the communication has to be either seeking or providing actual legal advice to count. And whether or not this email falls into that category, that could be pretty easily disputed. All right, another claim made in this new statement, it refers to the meeting back in last October, the one during which Lutz says he was fired and Clark says she merely asked for his resignation. The statement today reads, quote, it is clear from Dr. Lutz himself Dr. Clark and then board chair Ben Wick, who have the same recollection, he was not terminated on Thursday, October 29th. That statement is patently false. Lutz has made numerous statements indicating he was clearly under the impression that Clark had fired him. For instance, he told state investigators that Clark told him, quote, you're terminated effective immediately, and that she demanded he hand over his SRHD issued items. Now, those are just two of the many dubious claims made in this statement. We fact-checked and added context to several more on our website. To read that article, you can text SRHD to 509-448-2000, and we will text you a link. Now, you might also be wondering what the next steps are here, how all this might finally get resolved. Well, after that investigation, the State Board of Health decided it would have a hearing. And at that hearing, they'll formally review those findings and decide whether to take action, which could potentially include removing Clark from her role. But that hearing may not happen happen until late this fall. For now in the newsroom, Casey Decker, Crime 2 News. Casey, thank you very much. Well, for some good news for the weekend, we are seeing cooler temperatures forecasted all across the inland northwest, as well as some cleaner air. Finally, meteorologist Thomas Patrick in for Tom tonight in the Outdoor Weather Center to break down the forecast. Thomas? Yeah, not only is it going to get much cooler, but we are noticing quite a bit of a breeze from our Outdoor Weather Center and the air quality just improved by a couple another, a couple more points on the AQI as well. We're undergoing what, what's called air mass replacement. And that's
that's going to replace our current air mass, which had been quite smoky recently with a new cleaner but cooler one in anticipation of the weekend. Our wind gusts have been, look at this, sustained winds at 24 miles per hour, and our wind gusts have been close to about 35 the last couple hours. So what's happening is here's the old air mass. You can see where all that wildfire smoke had been pooling up, but pretty much the upper air winds are straight out of the west, and it's pretty much pushing it all towards the east. Still some minor hazy conditions over North Idaho, but that's even going to be alleviated in the next couple hours here. Our computer models still pick up on the smoke coming from the fires in northern and central Washington, but this is not going to be a large scale issue for this upcoming weekend because that's our next weather system. It's coming from the North Pacific, one of the uh, cooler regions of the uh, uh, the mid latitudes here. And as that moves into our area, our temperatures are going to drop quite significantly. Probably the coolest weather that we've experienced in almost two months across the region. A look ahead at your weekend and when we can expect some showers along with it all coming up in a few minutes. Talk to you then, Thomas. Thank you very much. New tonight, Washington State Fire Assistance has been mobilized to help contain the Whitmore Fire located in Okanagan County near Nespelum. The Whitmore Fire is burning in grass, sage, and crops. It started on August 3rd and has so far burned an estimated 5,000 acres. The fire is still growing and is threatening homes, crops, and pasture lands, we're told. Level 3 evacuations are in effect at this time. The cause of the fire is still under investigation tonight. And in just the past 24 hours, the Washington Department of Natural Resources has recorded 31 new fires in Okanagan County. The Cedar Creek fire is prompting level 3 evacuations and a homeowner in the area says fires have quickly become one of the scariest parts about living in the area. And we're family and we've gone through this so many times that um, we know what to do. But what is it like living under that constant threat of wildfire, knowing that any summer could be the one that comes to claim your house? Well, you certainly hope that it never happens, but you prepare yourself. The fire, which has burned now more than 52,000 acres, is 25% contained tonight. Department of Lands Commissioner Hillary Franz visited the fire to talk with firefighters on the front lines. Also in Okanagan County, a 100 acre fire is burning near Wakanda, Washington. Fire officials issued level three evacuations for the Walker Creek fire. Residents living west of Bonaparte Lake Road from Squattersville Road North, including the Lost Lake area, must leave now. The fire is 5% contained tonight. Across state lines, high winds caused erratic fire behavior yesterday as fire crews tried to fight the Cougar Rock Complex fires. The complex is made up of 10 wildfires, all started by lightning. They burn now more than 8,000 acres, about 30 miles northeast of Orofino. About 350 people are now working the fire. Right now, it's 42% contained. The Idaho Department of Lands Facebook page is a good resource for updates on several closures in that area. Of course, another good resource, our website, crim.com. Also, for the latest on the wildfires burning all across the region, just text the word FIRE to 509-448-2000, and we'll send a link directly to your phone. Well, the pandemic has been hard on everyone this past year, especially those in the entertainment industry. And that's why Inland Northwest Opera Company decided to take their show on the road with a mobile opera truck. Photojournalist Dave Summers takes us behind the scene of this event happening tonight. It's a little crazy. Oh, so let me we might have bitten off more than we can chew. The key doesn't necessarily always want to turn. So you have to jiggle it in a very special way. This idea started at the beginning of COVID last year. I mean, right away, if you want a problem to be solved, you got to ask the artist. So how is it that we're going to get our product out to the public? We can't get them into us. We can't be indoors in theaters. Oh, we started with opera grams, and last summer we were going to rent an opera truck. Um, we were going to rent a hay bale truck and, and pull it along and and bring opera um, but we had some troubles with the uh, permits and a few things like that and so we let it marinate all throughout the winter and said you know let's make this a real thing so this folds in the other one folds in then the legs come up because you have to you know and then the whole thing goes inside I think it's pretty awesome. Let's make this something we do every summer and let's take a mobile concert stage out to the entire Inland Northwest. So if you've never been in an opera hall, it doesn't matter. You can come <laughs> just be outside at your neighborhood park and, and um, 
have the opera truck come to you. If you don't hear opera this summer, it's not our fault because <laughs> we're out and about everywhere. And our job is to make opera accessible to everybody. By the way, the event or the mobile opera concert starts at 7 o'clock tonight. Should be pretty cool. All right, still ahead, claims are circulating online about President Biden's proposed infrastructure bill. Our Verify team looks into one of those claims when we come back after the break.